Hi there, it's Richard Anson here. This week on the show, I've got John Vari, Innovation Manager at John Lewis. I met him in his Maker Studio, which is on the ground floor of John Lewis's head office. John is all about innovation, about creating new. I wanted to find out what it's all about. Enjoy the chat. John, thanks very much for making the time. and. Uh, Great to be in your room Y at, uh, at John Lewis headquarters. Can you, can you just give us a, just a two minute overview of room Y and why you created it and what it's about? Okay. It? So, so room Y is, I suppose the best way to describe it is our internal skunk works. Okay. It's a, a space on the ground floor of John Lewis. Yep. And we built a space where we can actually look and, and try to bring ideas to life. You know, yep. some, most of the ideas we work on are, are not business as usual, but, but really tying into the, to the values of the partnership, experimentation is really important. And, yep. and to be able to do it in, a, in an environment away from the rest of the business, but still close to the rest of the business when we want to engage is really important. You can literally just pop upstairs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's when you've got, and it's not just about software development here. There's loads of kind of maker kit by the looks of things you kind of, You've got the you've got laser cutters, everything everything that you can actually make things real, and and we were chatting just a bit off 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 camera before while we were setting up, and you you were just talking a little bit about these these sofas, and it seemed like a really good way of of kind of bringing bringing room Y to life and what you do. do you, would you want to? Are you happy just talking through that from start sort of that that journey from start to finish? Yeah, I, I think it's a really good example of of the experimentation that we we, we try to to yeah. to do in in room Y. So. The interactive sofa studio is which what we called it um, started um, after a visit to the blue water store where we were yep. really exploring and and trying to find something that we could actually i suppose complement bring to bring to life in a yep. different way so any shape any fabric is a proposition that john lewis has where you yep. can go and choose from over 80 different shapes uh, yep. in the form of cards on a wall or, and then you go over to a wall and choose from over 200 different fabrics yeah and then you go to a terminal and then you identify the, the sofa that you would like to, to buy or learn more about. So what we wanted to do is actually explore, well, you, you can touch the fabrics, but you couldn't actually touch the shapes. So we wanted to, to actually explore what if customers could actually touch the, the shapes. So we went away and the first thing we did is we, we identified that we wanted to, to, to sell this in a really physical way to senior stakeholders in the business. Yeah. So we, we, we shaped out what we wanted to do and then we went and purchased a Sylvanian family armchair yeah. and a number of RFID tags. For those of you, the listeners who don't, don't know, Sylvanian families are kind of a children's toy, little, they're little yep. creatures and uh, and then they have furniture that they can sit on, etc. So you put you got an arm, a Sylvanian family armchair. Sylvanian yeah. family armchair, costing about probably nine pounds, ten pounds. Yeah, like yeah, that. it was yeah. around that, and we did that because we wanted to, as quickly as possible, show our idea to the senior people in the business. Yeah. So what we did is we built some software that recognised a RFID tag underneath the sofa and underneath uh, a red swab that we'd pulled together. Yeah. And then on a screen, we was able to show what the Sylvanian armchair looked like in red. Okay. And we showed that to the to the senior stakeholder. Was that the, the retail director or someone like that? Or can you, can you so yeah, so it was a director of buying in okay. the home team. Right. Um, okay. And and straight away it was like, oh, I want this by Christmas. So yeah. So we went away and. What time of year were you talking about now in terms of time scale? So that was April time, March, okay. April in two yeah in two thousand and fourteen yeah. and. So we actually then got it into store by November. So November it was in store, a fully functional prototype. For where six months, less than six months, yeah. Yeah, you can see that the, these are the types of furniture yeah. that we had in store. Um, but we went through a whole iterative phase where we, we looked at the user experience, we looked at the, the user experience in a physical way, no, yeah. not just online, but you know, when customers come over, we wanted it to be completely effortless. We wanted to humanize that whole process yeah. that was there before, you know, and, and bring it to life. You know, it wasn't replacing the whole proposition. It was just almost. So you had to take the whole sofa range and then get it 3D printed effectively. Is that what you, is that, that, was, the, that was the first step? Well, the first step is, is, is we, we limited to 20 shapes. Okay. We took 20 shapes because this was a minimum viable product that we were yeah. going to put into store and, and see how we could learn from how customers would engage. Yeah. Um, and it was crazy. We had around 65,000 customer interactions in, in the 10 weeks it was in store. And we saw an uplift of around 54% on, wow. on no shape. So, you know. 54% of sales on yeah. those. That's extraordinary. So extraordinary. So and I could literally, as a customer, I can pick up that shape, choose a different fabric, and then it will show on the digital on an iPad or something the yeah. uh, the, the 
the, so the we, sofa in, in, in that colour. Completely. We had this you know, really beautiful screen um, and on the table it was completely clean with a, 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 an acrylic laminate where it said place your, place your shape and then next yeah. to it it was place your fabric and then yeah. within, a, within a, a millisecond you would have that shape in that fabric on the screen. It yeah. would tell you the price range of the fabric, it would, any details that you, you would need to know. Including the, including the seams, is that right? You were saying where the, where the fabric seam might be? Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, you know, that's something, that, but by that. just doing this project, we understood so much. Yeah. You know, for example, one of the things we, we, we talked around is on the card, you can't see the back of the sofa. But if you've got a living room where, you know, you want to put the sofa in the middle of the floor, you need to be able to see the back. You know, how does the fabric yeah. run? And, you know, just by, by the way we, we, we developed the fabrics on, on the screen, yeah. it actually showed you, you know, in terms of where the cuts were. So yeah. for us, that was hugely important to actually provide customers with a, a, a photorealistic opportunity to see this, yeah. this, this sofa. So that was a big first win for you, really, I guess, in terms of credibility of room Y and yeah. Yeah, the business starting to. And how, how do you avoid, because I imagine one of the challenges is, is, is even though you're in head office, potentially being isolated, how do you, how do you avoid being isolated and creating ideas that, that no one listens to, et cetera, or creating yeah. things? And how, how do you get that? Do you have to really work at getting people's engagement from the rest of the business? They're all busy hitting their targets or meeting day-to-day -day targets. Yeah, I, I think that, that problem will never really go away. And yeah. you know, the first thing I identified when I joined the business in January 2014 was, I need to build relationships. You know, I need to yeah. go throughout the business and identify who the key people are within John Lewis, within the partnership, that are gonna help me deliver this innovation identity. Yeah. You, know, you know, John Lewis has always been very uh, innovative. But, yeah. You know, how can I complement that in a different way? And, and it wasn't around talking, it was around how can I engage with people you know, without technology yeah. You know, really looking at people's hearts and minds and really taking people on that, on that journey. So even to this day, you know, anyone that's new and joins, you know, we find it, you know, it's, it's a vital part to actually help build that, uh, help encourage that demand, but not just creating new ideas, but how we could, those ideas live on within the business. So yeah. when you speak to someone they say, oh, have you heard that new idea that John's talking about, or Alex and Seb in John's team, that they've come up with this really nice idea, it almost becomes viral. And then... That's where you start to see that. It becomes a business's idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is. And, and that yeah. kind of demand for change. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you want to encourage change. Yeah. And by, by having that relationship and those little infections around the business is, yeah. is really healthy. And how about, how about getting ideas from the business? So, mm. you know, if they're discussing a particular challenge in the boardroom for the business or what, how, how, do you manage to, how do you manage to get the business giving you ideas? Yeah. And, and I think the first project really helped, you know, in terms of, I suppose, demonstrating a very niche skill set that we have in here, you know, yeah. in terms of not just being able to surface ideas in a PowerPoint, but actually to show someone, you know, a real, in a real tangible way what, Something physical. what we can, what, what it could be for customers in store. Yeah. And then that, that adoption is really high. So, you know, we, we have a long list of, you know, concepts, products that people come to us. Yeah. But I suppose the way we approach is very much around design thinking, you know, empathizing okay. with the end user and who we're working for, who we're yeah. designing for and going through. So we always challenge, you know, I suppose there's the two behaviors around challenging and curios curiosity. Yeah. You know, if someone comes to us with a, with a concept that they believe is solving a problem, we'll challenge because- You take might, them right back to the problem, would you? Yeah, yeah. there'll be, be probably six times out of 10 that people haven't really thought around the solution that they're, the problem that they're actually solving. Yeah, okay. So, you know, but sometimes by just, you know, why? Yeah. That, that enough is, an, uh, you know, is easy enough to just try to get people to think differently or yeah. show that they haven't, you know, and it, it's a technology off the shelf that, that we get, not just internally, but externally, we get inundated with people, salespeople saying, oh, we've got this really nice new screen, you know, you, do, do you want to buy it? You know, yeah. and, and we become a real kind of conduit for that. So it's around building our identity is where, you know, we don't want to do stuff just off the shelf. Yeah. You know, we, we want to revolutionize the way John Lewis customers engage with the brand. And by really understanding them and designing for them and with them, yeah. this was this is an innovation we did with the customers. This went into store nowhere near 100% complete. Yeah. But by seeing how they started to pull shapes together, you know, without even using the technology, how does that armchair look so with same, this sofa? Right. Okay. You start to learn. Okay, that's that's a function that a customer will yeah. want. We had people say, "Oh, can I bring over different products?" So you, st you start to evolve with the customer and they become part of your, your innovation strategy. It's so vital. you're really putting customer, fir customer first. Yeah. And, and, and so at what, on, you know, on that note, what's your view of technology then? Is that, is, 
because there's lots of technology here, cool technology, one can get very excited and carried away. How do you, how do you blend that customer and technology together? The most important part for us is how we can, I suppose in, in, its, in its brutalist form, is hide technology. Okay, we I want love to that, so just get it, making it invisible. But same as this, we, everything we had for this was under the table. It was, yeah. a t it was engaging with a shape and a table. Yeah. The screen was just a way of surfacing your, your end goal. Yeah. You know, we, we, you, technology and it needs to be embedded in the architecture of, of where you are. You know, yeah. you, people need to see it and believe it and, and want to go and, and explore. Because if they see, you know, all of these cables on a table or, you know, there's electronics under this, people are a little bit less, more kind of sceptical around, I want to go and engage and explore. Yeah. I might break it. Or it's, I'm, I'm not digital. Fearful. Yeah, yeah, I'm not digital, yeah. But this, it's like, it's great. You know, the biggest risk we had would, would people still steal the shapes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, given that these were... For their Sylvanians. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> given that they yeah. were like 75p each to print, I mean... Yeah you start to limit the risk, which kind of goes back as well. How do you get people to buy into your way of thinking is, people talk about risk, but everything we did here was completely, there was, we mitigated every risk. Yeah. We weren't connected to the internet, you know, we were, these were on the table, but there was no way of actually, you know, damaging any relationship for John Lewis or the, or the customers. Yeah. It was completely exploratory. Interesting, yeah, fascinating. And, and one of the things I remember we were, we were on a, when we were on a panel recently, you talked about business models and you talked about sometimes one of the challenges was effectively um, new business models from startups, et cetera, mm -hmm. don't necessarily fit with traditional retail business models. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you manage that and yeah. that, that process? I think one of the, the most frequent questions I get asked is, you know, what's, your, what's the biggest obstacle in, in what you do? And, and, I, and I think the kind of mits, mismatch of, of, of not mismatch. I think when you speak to someone internally, they they have a business as usual. They have a strategy or a, or a business model that they're they're working towards. They've got to get a job done. They've got targets to hit. Yeah, yeah. and 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 I'm completely sympathise with that. But you know, when we come with something, for example, this th this was not part of a business model. Yeah. You know, so naturally you, you're you're going to have people that you know they they need to include this within their business plan with their you know their, their that's going to change the strategy of the business going forward. So you know. It's like when we work with startups, you know, year one of, of an accelerator, for example, we had absolutely no trials in a store, none. You know, you'd go to the business, the different customer areas, you know, we want to do a trial with this startup in a store. Yeah. Can't do it. You know, need to go through this process. But if you look at year two, you know, and year three, we, we had trials within four or five weeks of, of, of the accelerator launching. You yeah. know, and for us, that was, you know, hugely valuable for, for us as a learning, but from a business point of view, in terms of change, they're actually seeing, you know, working with these companies that are, are fast, fast paced. Yeah. You know, we do need to evolve our business model to, you know, to, to encourage, you know, this, this change, you know, this, this relentless, I suppose, fearless way of working. Yeah, yeah, it's accelerating that change. Yeah. And you're working with True Start now, just around the corner, so you're managing to get, get finally get senior buy-in into that and to getting people down there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think it's that community, you know, when you've got True Start and JLab is, is how can you build this community? You have, all, you have these startups that are coming in and taking yeah. part in True Start, is how can you build a community in John Lewis to actually dovetail in with, with, with True Start? Yeah. And I think that's where you start to see the real value is there's a real seamless from companies coming to True Start, they've pitched, they've pitched to John Lewis, what value can John Lewis add to these startups? Yeah. Is it through mentoring? Is it through investment? Is is it for an introduction to other suppliers? Yeah. As quickly as possible. Yeah. You know, and, and how can you be as ben most benefit to these startups? Yeah. And it is through pace. It's this, yeah, it's this yeah, big gap. Yeah, yeah, it's this true. gap between saying, yeah, this is great, and then nothing. Yeah. You know, it has to be you know iterative in its own way, and yeah. and I think that actually changes how large businesses actually operate. So some of your role kind of coaching the startups as well and coaching both sides, coaching the John Lewis team and the startups about how best to work together. Is that, do you find that? And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I try to be almost like the connector. Yeah. Not, not just through the startups, but through different technologies. Yeah. You know, being able to see one thing connect to a different part of the business to actually create an innovation. Yeah. You know, what we're doing is not innovative. Yeah. It's the stuff that comes out at the end is, is the innovation. Yeah, we're just absolutely. thinking differently. So, so working with the startups, you know, you can, again, empathize. Yeah. I can see, you know, the challenges they have and that communication is really important. But then also we have the ability to empathize with people that we work with in the partnership. You so then you actually, you actually yeah. look at the, you, you can actually identify the gaps and say, actually, we can do a really quick trial here in head office. 
Yeah. You know, we have in the partnership we have ninety thousand people. Ninety thousand. Wow. Ninety thousand. Okay. So yeah. really, you know, you have a whole load of people that you could yeah, crowdsource yeah. an idea with. Yeah, absolutely. So it's how yeah. can you constantly keep searching for these opportunities and keep tying back into our, our values? We're, in a, we're a over a hundred and fifty year old business yeah. that was born out of an experiment. Yeah. You know, how absolutely. can we keep that drill and not talk about being an experiment? You know, how can we really play on it and be kind of part of almost part of business as usual? Yep. And and if you if you look at if you go back six years ago, or maybe, yeah, probably would be about six, seven years ago, people would have talked about e-commerce and they'd have talked about, you know, offline in the store. And now, now I guess retail is just retail. And, and the consumer, I read somewhere 60% of people in store now look at their smartphones, et cetera. How, how, do, how do you think about that physical and digital world? Yeah, I, I think it's really important that you don't look at them as channels. Yeah. You know, looking at it as, as one customer. Do they look at them as channels into your, to your, do the senior team look at them as channels now or just one customer? It's one yeah. customer. Yeah. You know, everyone I speak to within the yeah. business, it's one customer. Now, I think the most important part is you need to mirror how the customer looks. And you know, this is my personal opinion, you know, we talk about a single customer view, not yeah. us, I'm talking about the industry in general, yeah, a single yeah. customer view. But you know, the customers don't look at and say, we want one, sing, one, custo- one, one retailer view. Yeah. You know, I, w- I, want, I want to go from here to here and have the most efficient journey as possible. You know, I want to have an experience. You know, I want to feel p- part of something. Yeah. You know, I love going into a store and, 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 and you, know, you, you can engage, you, know, you, can, you can be immersed. You know, I, you know, what's, what's the compelling reason to get my phone out and use the app? You know, yeah. what, what do I do when I get to this, this, this lighting fixture? You know, I just think that constant curation of experience is gonna touch both the digital and physical worlds. Yeah, and the winners will be who who has the best curation. And you've, and you've proven that the match merging the two together with that with your yeah. with your your your, your sofas and yeah, the sofa I mean, chooser. You know, you you kind of point to it as well as you know the the smartphones in store. You know, if you go into a store having a ter- a kiosk on the wall with yeah. a dot com website. I can do it on my phone or at home. <laughs> yeah, I've often wondered what the point what's, of those what's, are. Yeah. You know, surfing.com in different ways. You know, yeah. we're, only, we're surf- surfacing.com information in different ways. Yeah. You know, it's just being smart and actually focusing on the customer and making it playful, making it to the point where you can be three years old or 103 years old. There is no barrier to actually experiencing buying a sofa. Yeah. And how do you differentiate between the kind of need for retailers to drive sales, but also potentially the customer experience side to enhance brand, which may be less, less, less tangible. Obviously with a sofa, you hit a home run where it's improving customer experience and driving mm. sales. But how do you think about that when you're, prior, you're prioritizing? Is, is some of the things you do around, around building brand, and brand value? Yeah, I think naturally that what, what we're doing and, and everything we're doing will drive brand value. Yeah. You know, in terms of, you know, really providing a differentiated brand experience, yeah. consumer experiences, and, and you know, ultimately we want to revolutionize how customers engage with a brand. Yeah. You know, whether it being the new lead store where we've created a digital staircase. Talk us a little bit about that, the digital staircase. So yeah, so we, you, we, we were- so You literally just opened a new lead, a store in Leeds, yep. okay, yeah. Yep, last week, and you know, we were engaged on a project um, working alongside the store design and the brand team yeah. where we identified a space on the stairs where we wanted to bring it to life in a different way. And what we did is we, we kind of blurred, the, again, the physical and digital world. We yeah. had this beautiful physical wall with different wood materials, different kind of, I suppose, other materials as well. But then what we did was we, br- we brought in physical uh, digital screens to actually help animate different areas of the wall. Okay. And it's, it's a real unique one. It was, it's, it's, it was around visual merchandising, but no product. It was, it was different materials, different kind of animations, but, but just, it was almost like- Trying to spark ideas in people's heads, yeah, really. Yeah, and I suppose okay. it, it excite as well, you know, and surprise and delight. Yeah. And, you know, how, how can you, it's almost like a decompression zone, you know, in between, sto- in yeah, between yeah. floors so that you go and you see this, and it, it almost takes you out of reality and, and provides yeah. you with this really emotive, beautiful experience yeah. that kind of, we hope, put smiles on people's faces and then spend a bit of time there and then, and then continue shopping. Yeah. And, Again, it's an experiment, you know, because we've never done this before, and you know, to do something like that in John Lewis is a is a huge bonus. That's a big step. That's a big step forward. Yeah. And you mentioned taking people out of reality, and I can see over there, 
you know Oculus Rift set and you've got a big uh, big powerful yep. gaming gaming machine what are you what, where, where where are you what are you playing around with there you know we, yeah. we identified I mean it feels quite a long time ago now but almost about 18 months ago you know the the, the role VR would play in, in people's lives and yeah so we we went to Innovate UK and we partnered on a on a challenge to encourage innovation in okay. um, virtual reality so we went through a, a few different phases and we picked a winner called Future Visual and we developed a, an in-store experience um, for customers to actually walk through a, a home that's been decorated in a John Lewis product. Within, within this virtual reality environment you can change the colours of sofas, tables, wallpapers, you can turn it from day to night because you know... Just by reaching out effectively. Yeah, yeah. but just by gesture, you know, yeah. and it was all about again exploring, you know, customers would have never seen an experience like this so we, rather than, than sending a VR experience out to all 47 stores yeah it was an opportunity to innovate with the customer and learn and understand yeah. you know what what feels natural you know what, what did you it? learn from it so we we, Do you, we get some people freaked out or I think I think ultimately in the beginning people will see it and it goes to the point where we talk around cables and yeah. you know that approach you know being unable to approach you know people would have looked at it and thought you know what is this it's, you know natural skepticism but it goes again in terms of the same way that we pitch this to the business you need to be able to take people on that journey yeah you know and, and you need to be able to invite people over and say look this we are we're trying this you know we're trying this because we want to provide customers with a better experience or, or a differentiated experience yeah. you know and having a physical store that's a real you know uh, unique selling point for us so yeah. bit, inviting customers over to actually walk through this space and then getting feedback you know all of the feedback I saw was like, wow, I didn't know that you could actually do this. You know, and once people had gone through that, that yeah. journey, it was like, you know, I would definitely use this more often. And I suppose yeah. it's, it's, in our, it's our responsibility then to go away and actually to try and again curate that experience that is completely beneficial to, to the customer yeah. and to the brand. And perhaps I guess you start to merge that with the knowledge you've got of yeah. that incredible knowledge that your partners have, the 90,000 partners on the yeah. you know, go on to John, John Lewis floor and actually there's a very knowledgeable, knowledgeable set of team there to help yeah, bring completely. Those, bringing those two together. Completely. It's, it's, a, it's an enabler and yeah. I think that's how we need to look. Everything that we build is, 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 is not just great for the brand, it's not just great for, for business but it's an enabler for people in store to actually yeah. really provide that, that, that unique customer service, that special customer service to yeah. customers and knowledge, with the knowledge. Yeah, great. And where, where, ne where next? What's, 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 your, what's the next, if you, next six months, what does, that, what does that hold for you here? So. We've got a number of projects in the pipeline that I can't yeah. share. No, no, um, sure, yeah. But but really interested um, in around, I suppose, VR in terms of how, how that pans out, but I suppose mixed reality as well. Okay. You know, the launch of a, a HoloLens, you know, yeah. how does that play into the field? But also, I suppose, kind of g getting a bit more kind of f future, future thinking. And at the-, the How far ahead you, when you think future, how far ahead Well, this are you one is, is quite radical. And kind of, I was drawn a question, the same panel we, we both took yeah. part in, one of the, the points I raised was being able to download your dreams. And that's something that I, a lot I've been looking at recently around artificial intelligence, the future of, 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 I suppose, in this world, you know, in terms of what is the boundaries to actually doing that? Yeah. You know, we, we spoke earlier around, around the metaverse. You know, I'm really fascinated around, you know, what does virtual and physical reality actually mean? Do they merge? You know, do yeah. they, you know, what does the shop look like? You know, we look at all of these conversational interfaces and, you know, what is the future of retail? But not the future of retail in the next five, ten years, but 2030, 40. You know, how yeah. does, you know, is space travel going to be, be upon us? You know, and how does that impact retail? Or how does that Im retail impact space travel? Indeed, you know, yeah. so it's about, I suppose, being able to be brave enough to look that far ahead. Got a long time to shop on board a journey to Mars. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, that's great. I think that's a, that's a great place to end. I, I love that idea of being able to download your, download your dreams. So, uh, John, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers.